I always wonder, do people really like my YouTube videos? I know there are tons of different YouTube statistics that I can use to understand it, but I always feel that there's a piece missing. So I thought, can I maybe use some AI magic to help me out? As it turns out, I can, so let me show you. Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. So how can I use AI to understand if you like my videos or not? As it turns out, it's not that complicated. And they say pictures are worth a thousand words, but also one word is worth a thousand thumbs up or other YouTube statistics. So to really understand if you like my videos or not, I need to get some inputs from where you actually engage me with me. And where do you do that? Obviously in the YouTube comments. For each video I get a fair bunch of comments and what if I can extract from those comments the core sentiment if you like that video or maybe if you don't. Luckily that's not a new problem and there are already a lot of different machine learning models out there that might help me out with this. Therefore to achieve my goal the first thing I would need to do is to get a bunch of videos from the YouTube and then to extract the comments from those videos. This is something that I can easily achieve using the YouTube API. Then I need to feed these comments into a machine learning model that is able to extract sentiment based on that specific text. Unfortunately, Microsoft Azure already provides us such machine learning models for quite some time under the umbrella of Azure Cognitive Services. So I just need to wire these two pieces together and then I'll get an answer to my question. Let's do this together. The first piece of the puzzle is to get the needed data from the YouTube API. To achieve this, I have installed a bunch of NuGet packages like this Google API score that contains the core API clients and information and classes and then Google API YouTube V3 because this is the API that I want to call from my application. And with this in place, I have already created here this YouTube API service in which I get all the data that I need. So first of all, in the constructor, what we need to do is to instantiate or to create an instance of this YouTube service. To create an instance for this YouTube service, we need two pieces of information, an API key that we can get from our Google developer account, and then an application name, which is the name of the application that will, will show up in our Google development portal. I have placed all this information in a constants class, but I will not show you my constants class because obviously it contains the key. And for sure, this is not safe. This is not something that you should do. And I have created at least two different videos in which I explain how we can keep secrets keys really secret in .NET. First of all, using Azure Key Vault if we use Azure services, but also if we don't, how can we use environment variables for that? In this service, we expose a public method, which is this get most popular videos with comments async. And the concept of this method is to get the 10 most popular videos, including their comments. Now to achieve this in or with the YouTube API, there are several steps that we need to perform. First of all, we need to, well, get the most popular videos. And to do this, we have this private method in which we use the search of the YouTube service to look for the videos that have the highest number of views. And we can specify this by simply specifying here the order and we specify that we want to order based on this enum and this is view count. We also set here a max results, which is 11. And then we just execute this request that we have created in the previous lines of code and then just return the result. The result also has an item that contains the information that we actually want. So we will just return that. Once we get a list of videos from the YouTube API, we want to transform the information that we get to from the API to our video class. And our video class is very simple. It just contains the title of the video. It contains a list of comments that you will see later we will actually use as documents for our cognitive services. And then we have a predominant sentiment, something that we will populate at a later point. And then the YouTube video ID, you will also see that we need it just in a few seconds. So to do this, first of all, we want to make sure that we look only into data that contains a video ID because that's the sign that the return result is actually a video and not a plain list. And if it is a video, then we just create a new instance of the video. And then we also populate this YouTube video ID with the video ID that we got from there. And then after we do this, we have this populate comment async method that takes in all the newly created videos that we have here and it should populate them with comments. Now, this method is a little bit longer and pretty nested. 
But the core principle here is that in, on the YouTube service client, we this time use this comment thread. Now, the problem is with the threads, we also set the max result to 100. But the problem is that you get basically the parent comment, but you also get separately also all the child comments for that specific parent comment. And that's why what we need to do here is have this nested for each loop. So first of all, we want to go through all the parents. And in our case, we don't care if the comment is a parent or not, or if it belongs to a thread. So we just add everything, first of all, the parents to our list. And then we also look if we have child comments. Then we also add those child comments to our list. Now we need to move over to the next piece of the puzzle, which is interacting with, co with cognitive services and analyzing the sentiment of some texts. So I will create here a new resource and we'll search here for cognitive and we get these cognitive services. That's obviously our choice. And here we just click on create. Let's just choose this resource group. For now, we will leave East US as our region. I don't really care about that. And we also need to give a name for our new resource and select a pricing tire, which is the standard S0, when we also have to check this checkbox. Now, the next thing on the network here, we have three choices. It should be available for all networks, including the internet. And this is the choice that we will take right now, because I don't want to set up virtual networks for that. Then review and create. Now that the resource is created, let's click on it, because there is some information that we will need from here. If you have this cognitive service instance, you instantly have access to all the cognitive services that are exposed through this umbrella, which are the decision, language, speech, vision, and so on and so forth. However, the most important thing here is to make this work with our application is to go here to these key and endpoints. And this is a very important information because what we will need is we will need the key and make sure to copy that and well, use it as a configuration, either in Azure Key Vault or in your environment variables. And you also need to copy the endpoint. Finally, we need to implement the functionality to feed in the comments to Azure Cognitive Services and get the sentiment back. To do this, I also have installed this new guest package, which is Azure AI Text Analytics, because that is the SDK that we need to use in this case. And this text analytics SDK, if we go to our test anal analysis service, we have this constructor here and we have this private read only text analytics client. So obviously, in our constructor, we will need to instantiate a text analytics client. And to do this, we first of all need to get the credentials and create a credential. And as I said, this time we need to, uh, to use an Azure key credential and specify the key that we have in our constants class in this case. And once again, we need the key credential because since this SDK makes an API call that is authenticated via an API key, we need to provide a key. So we can't simply use the default Azure credential as authentication mechanism here. And then we need to create the endpoint or to specify the endpoint of our Azure Cognitive Services instance. And for that, we just read the endpoint that we have copied earlier from the Azure portal. And then we can instantiate this new text analytics client. Now, let me briefly explain you how this language model behind Azure Cognitive Services works so that we can achieve our result. So what we need is to feed it a piece of text and we should get the sentiment back. Now, for Azure Cognitive Services, this type of text that we want to input or to feed into it is usually called or referred to as a document. Now, in our case, each YouTube comment for a video will be a document. Obviously, each document contains several sentences. So what we will get back from the service is the overall sentiment for the document, but then we'll also get a collection for each sentence and get the sentiment for each sentence. Sentiments are expressed as a mix of different possibilities, including a confidence level. The confidence level is nothing else than a double between 0 and 1, and the closer the value is to 1, the more confident the machine learning algorithm is about that specific sentiment. So in the end, we put everything together and it gives you what the most notable sentiment from a certain document is. There's a catch though. In Azure Cognitive Services, each document can contain a maximum of 512 characters. This means that if we have comments that are longer than 512 characters, theoretically what we would need to do is to split those into chunks being exactly or at most 512 characters, then get the sentiment for each document and then reconcile the result and get the overall sentiment for the entire comment. 
Also, we can provide a batch of documents to the service at once, and this might help a little bit with this scenario that we have this limit of 512 characters per document. However, there's a catch also here because the maximum batch size that we can provide to the service is a 10 documents. Now, we imagine that we would like to do this for product reviews in an online shop or maybe to social media posts. There would be quite a little bit of work to do, but I think it's important that you are aware about these shortcomings. However, right now I will keep things as simple as possible and I will just want to get an overall sentiment for each comment. Coming back to our text analysis service, we see that we expose this public method, analyze video sentiment async and we take in a list of videos for which we want to get the sentiment. And here we iterate through each of the videos and we have to implement some dirty workarounds to go around the limitations that I have described earlier. And that's why I will only take into consideration comments that are less than 500 characters or less than or equal to 500 characters. And since our batch size is only 10 items, I would only take 10 comments for each video and I will create a list for them. Now, I need to create a list of, the, of those comments because what we'll do afterwards, we'll use this client and we can call this analyze sentiment batch async, which obviously makes a call to our Azure Cognitive Services using this list of documents as a batch that it should perform the analysis on. Now, once we go the result back, we just need to implement some very hacky algorithm to just understand exactly, okay, what is the overall sentiment of the video? And to do this, we have a, a few counters for positive, for negative, for neutral and mixed count. And these are the different sentiments that come back with a certain confidence level. Now, the idea is that what we want to do is to iterate through each of the comment and get the sentiment and then increase the counter of the predominant sentiment of that specific comment. And what we do afterwards is that we, okay, uh, go to each of the results. And if the sentiment is mixed, we just increase the mixed counter. If the sentiment is negative, we just increase the negative counter. If it's neutral, we increase the neutral counter. And if it's positive, we increase the positive counter. And then we do some very, very hacky if statements in which if, uh, well, the positive count is bigger than all others, then we mark this as positive. If the negative count is bigger than all others, then we will mark this video as negative. If neutral is bigger than all others, then we will mark it neutral. And if mixed is greater than all others, then we will mark it as mixed. The last thing that we need to do is go back here to our program class and we need to wire everything up together. So first, let's create a new instance of this YouTube API service and then let's call this get most popular videos with comments async to get a list of the comments. Then we instantiate our text analysis service and we call this analyze video sentiment async providing the videos that we have got in the previous step. And now we can simply iterate through the results and simply display in the console the title of the video and the predominant sentiment. And keeping this very procedural style, let's make it even a little bit fancier and create a counters for each of type of the videos, like if there's positive, negative, mixed or neutral, we want to see exactly the count of them. And last but not least, let's play a little bit with console colors and display the statistics or the final statistics for the positive. We will use green for the negative, we will obviously use red. For the mixed, we will use magenta. And for the neutral, we will keep it as white. Now let's run the application and see the result. I'm really curious about that. Okay, and here we have the output. We have here all the videos and then we have the final result and we see that positive we have nine, negative we have zero, mixed we have also zero and neutral we have two. So it seems that you like my videos. Therefore, to show your sign of appreciation, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button on this video and like it. It will really make it easier for others to discover. And if you're for the first time here, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are always notified when there's something new happening on this channel. And if you have any questions or just want to get in touch with me, just head over to the comment section and leave me a comment and I promise you, I will not feed it to Azure Cognitive Services. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.